Alright everybody, welcome back to Nathan Snog Snob. Please do not mind the rain. My, my, my wonderful home state of Washington just, just, just never stops, you know? It's just constant precipitation down. Actually, we're flooding right now, so I'm cut off from town. So I can't deposit into uh, my bank account at the moment. So yes, I got a bunch of cash and nothing I can actually do with it. Such as living between two floodplains. But enough about that. As the rain constantly falls in my lovely home, uh, we are going to do something that I think a lot of you people who don't like my lyrical breakdowns, because some of you don't, are going to really appreciate. Today we are doing a uh, instrumental from the Ingve Malmsteen album Parabellum, because I'm still doing Parabellum. I haven't seen many requests lately, although I really need to check my comments. This time we are doing Presto Vivaci. I'm assuming I pronounced that correctly. The dude is a neoclassical musician when the genre died. When the subgenre of heavy metal and those neoclassical died, he, he just kept with it. You know, and you would think that was a terrible decision on Malmsteen's part, but as it turned out, not so much. I mean, I like to brag about the guy, but he really is, like, the greatest, single greatest heavy metal guitar player in existence. There are some uh, guys who are really, really close. There's John Petrucci, there's Paul Gilbert, there's... If you stretch out to just hard rock, you can say uh, Joe Satriani, who looks like an alien. Which is probably why he makes so much music themed after aliens, honestly. But with that being said, we're going to do Malmsteen. It says, Presto Vivaci! is basically a classical piece, and classical is nerd music. I must go all the way, you see. But, screw it. I was going to like open my pocket and just jam a bunch of pens in there and <laughs> as a joke, but my, my pocket won't... Oh, never mind. There we go. We are going super nerd. We are going super nerd uh, on the classical because it's like the nerdiest genre ever. And uh, I, um, we will sound like a nerd is with the glaven. Anyway, <clears throat> let us proceed with Presto Vivaci in C minor.
actually, that was uh, um, very, very good. And uh, but yeah, <laughs> doing my nerd voice with my uh, with my pens in my pocket because it is you know it's just neoclassical. It's like the nerdiest form of heavy metal possible, except maybe power metal, which is very J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, now, for those of you who aren't really metal fans but like classical, I think you would probably find this pretty relatable, especially if you like Baroque or Italian music. And at the same time, uh, by moments, this sounded a lot like his stuff from the 80s. Maybe not like Trilogy necessarily, but stuff around the time he released Trilogy, which is still my favorite Malmsteen album overall. Yes, I know, that's like his corniest thing, but I, I, I don't care. You know, I, I sort of like that kind of thing sometimes, you know. A little bit excessively cliche goes a long way. Suffice to say, Emperor Palpatine is a favorite villain of mine in movies. So, I mean, do you, you, you know who you're dealing with when someone says that Palpatine is one of their faves. Uh, someone a bit cornball. But yeah, this proves once again why he is one of the best and why he probably stuck with the neoclassical sound for so long. It's because he makes it sound so freaking good. Like, this actually holds up even in 2021. Or, uh, pardon, this is 2022. This is this is the first video of 2022. Right. So while the style of music itself is not aged well, the performer absolutely has. Now, not to, not to get down on and worship him all day long... Uh, so I'll maybe switch up the topic and mention how sort of metal has changed over the years and everything's more metalcore and uh, gent and so forth. Would it be possible that older subgenres, like maybe some of my favorites, like uh, U.S. power metal or the neoclassical sound, I mean... Is it really aged out like I think it is, or does it really kind of have still have some staying power? Is what I want to know. Is it is it truly dead, or is it just um, just sort of my imagination? Because you really don't hear any new artists in those genres. You hear old veteran artists returning. I mean, you still sometimes hear talk about Armored Saint, and they're fucking ancient. I think there's a place in the world still for music like this, I think. Even if it is in, like, the back corner of some itty-bitty club that hardly anybody knows exists, or something of that nature. But at least there it would have some kind of, a, some kind of existence. Uh, suffice to say, I think this was a brilliant song. And it really plays up on his love of the Baroque and sort of Italian music like his love for Antonio Vivaldi, which I'm a little mixed on. To, to nerd out on classical for a bit, I like the Slavic school uh, of classical music. I like Slavic stuff. So uh, Shostakovich, Tchaikovsky, Masorgsky, some of the mighty handful, not many. They were a pretty juvenile core of musicians who maybe didn't fully understand what they were really doing. So that's sort of what I like, but I can look at the Baroque stuff and be like, yeah, like legit. Like Bach was doing that shit for years, and Bach's music is influencing literally everything. You can find elements of Bach and everything from uh, soundtrack music and movies and to video games and sometimes even in rock music. Like, the dude is basically inescapable. So, uh, TLDR version... I definitely feel like there's still a place in the world for music like this, but its role has changed significantly, and maybe that's why Malmsteen is still doing it. Because he loves it, and he recognizes it, recognizes that it still has life in it. Either way, you know, thank you for joining me on that little rabbit hole and nerding out. Woohoo! But um, as for the heavy metal element to his music. Many people say that like he's a mindless shredder and playing fast is all he'll ever be able to do. Bullshit. This was totally coherent. I could hear every single note. I don't know if many of the haters could, but I can certainly hear it. I can hear every note. I can hear every chord just about. Totally coherent. Not a single note that the guy plays 
that he didn't intend to play that note. No accidents exist in Malmsteen's playing. Right, a lot of people who hate Shred or hate heavy metal think like, Oh my god, mindless Shred! It's not mindless at all. You just don't have the ear for it. You have to acquire an ear. It's an acquired taste. And when you've been into heavy metal for years, it's often so easy to forget that this shit is often an acquired taste. You know, you don't just pick it up once and then forever. It's like, you gotta listen to a few bands. You gotta listen to some Metallica. You gotta listen to some Pantera. Some Anthrax, some Slayer, some Megadeth. Branched out, listen to some Death. Listen to some uh, Gorgoroth. Listen to, you know, listen to Stradivarius or, or to Malmsteen. And then maybe by then, by then, uh, you might acquire a taste for some of the, for some of the more timid heavy metal like Judas Priest, and then maybe you can dive deep onto something really intense, like like, like some grindcore or gore grind, or, or slam, if that if that's your inclination. Just my recommendation, don't listen to doom metal. It's literal torture. But yeah. This was an epic-ass song. And finally, for the rating, I would place it at a solid... Uh, five out of five. The length was uh, was appropriate. The solos were not too long. It's a solid instrumental. And instrumentals, particularly on Malmsteen albums, makes nice transitions between uh, one song that has lyrics and another song that has lyrics. A nice little instrumental in between. Maybe even another instrumental afterwards. It's a good it's a good song to throw into and put meat into the album so it has a good running time. Which, believe me, that does matter. It matters when you're able to sit there for, an, for a full hour to listen to an album. It really is kind of like one of the best experiences ever. I know people like to make mix or track lists or mixes. But just sometimes listen to a full album. Just sometimes listen to a full album. Listen to a Malmsteen album. Listen to Trilogy. I highly recommend that one if you don't mind a little 80s cheese. Anyway, uh, <laughs> down below there will be a link to my books. Please buy, download, and read them. And as always, choose peace.